Good evening and welcome to TC Network. I am Tignay Tim Hoki bringing you today's news. Today's top headlines include Kuki in P. Ziribam, Tamenglong and None South Center's intervention on series of attacks against two cookies or villages in Jiribam. Justice for my father, the manson of former soldier at his father's burial. Nine killed, 300 wounded as walkie-talkie explode in Lebanon. IMD forecasts heavy rainfall in Northeast Tet still September 24. News in details. The Kuki in Piziribam, Tamenglong and None in its press condemnation dated the 19 of September 2024 states that it is a poll to learn that several national media depicts Maytay militants attacks on Mongbung and Sizang villages, two cookies of villages in Jiribam, as that of Kuki attacking Maytay village. The name Mongbung village itself contradicts that Kuki attacked Meitei as Mongbung is a Kuki Zo and Mar terminology and many Kuki villages bear the name Mongbung, stated the NP. The Kuki NP also calls upon the security forces, particularly that of the Central Security Forces, to restrain the open movement of Meitei militants in the vicinity of Mongbung and Sizang villages, as there has been incessant attack upon the two villages for almost two weeks in a row, and Meitei militants are still roaming freely, passing through security establishment. On the contrary, security operations were constantly carried out upon the two villages rather than carrying out security operations from where the attacks were orchestrated, the NP stated. Thereafter, when the village volunteers were unarmed and unprepared due to security operations, Maytay militants will start attacking Kukizo and Mar villages. The Kuki in P questions the intention of the state police conducting security operations on the two Kukis or villages which were mostly carried out in tandem with Meite militants attacks, which is clearly a sign of abetment to Meite terrorist attacks. The presence of UNLF, Meite separatist militants, near the two Kuki villages is the main factor for the intermittent attacks over the past two weeks and yesterday night's attack, 18 September 2024, counts to 13 times of attack over the two villages in the past two weeks. While the union government is seen working to bring peace in the state, Meite militants are intermittently attacking the two Kukis of villages covertly and state government is abetting the Meite militants, states the release. The Kuki in P. Ziribam, Tamenglong and None appealed the central government to intervene in Ziribam area so that situation is not aggravated beyond control. Also, the Kuki in P. appraised the concerned authority that the presence of separatist Meite militant camps in the vicinity of Kuki, Zo and Mar villages in Ziribam area pose an imminent threat to peace and tranquility in the area and should be removed or relocated to Infal. Lim Hulal Mate, a former Havaldar of the Mechanized Infantry in the Assam Regiment, was laid to rest at the Kuki Zo Martyr Cemetery in Paisang, Kangpopi District yesterday. His burial took place amid a somber atmosphere of mourning and tributes from the community. Mate, who hailed from Motbung Saranveng in Southern Hills, belonged to the Kukizo community. On September 7, he was abducted by suspected armed members of the Meitei group Arambai de Engol after purchasing medicine for his ailing wife and hardware supplies. The following morning, his lifeless body was discovered in a field in Sekmai in Fall West, brutally beaten and lying in a pool of blood. The tragic incident has left the community in shock, which demands for justice intensifying as Mate's family and fellow community members paid their last respects. His service to the nation and their circumstances of his death have drawn widespread condemnation. The Kukizo people mourn not only a former soldier but also a dedicated husband and community member whose life was cut short in an act of violence. The burial program was organized by the Committee on Tribal Unity Cedar Hills under the theme, You Sacrifice Your Today for Our Tomorrow. Reverend Lam Sat Ho Boom led the solemn burial ceremony as hundreds of 
from the Kuki Zo community, along with Mate families, friends and loved ones gathered to mourn and pray their respects to the former soldier. Kuki Zo volunteers pay tribute with a ceremonial salute during the condolence service, honoring Mate's commitment and sacrifice. Tang Min Lun Mate, the son of a former Indian soldier who aspires to follow in his father's footsteps in the Indian Army, expressed, Despite all the hardships, I find comfort and feel better knowing my father received the honorable burial he truly deserved. In a heart-wrenching moment, the BS student stood by his father's grave, overwhelmed with emotion and thanked his father for being a towering inspiration in his life and expressed deep pride in having such a remarkable man as his father. My father was a devoted soldier who served with honor and dedication. It is heartbreaking to see his life end in such a brutal manner. I urge the government to ensure that justice is served and that those responsible for his death are held accountable, said Tang Min Lun Mate. I'm feeling better. Uh, I would like to say thank you. And it's a very honor and grateful to have a father like him. I would, I would like to thank him because he's a very big inspire for me. I would like to request to the government to deliver a justice for my father. I, I would like to thank my community and the nation to recognize my father's contribution for the country. He then conveyed his heartfelt thanks to his community for their immense support and solidarity to throughout this challenging time. Tang Milun Mate also called on the nation to acknowledge and honor his father's profound contributions and sacrifices for the country. The Kuki Students Organization General Headquarters is concerned over astounding letter from the Secretary to the Chief Minister of Manipur addressed to the Director General of Police DGP and Security Advisor on September 16, 2024, which was widely publicized on social media and in mainstream media. The letter mentioned the Chief Minister Office receiving reports of over 900 newly trained Kuki militants capable of using drone base bombs, projectiles, missiles and jungle warfare having entered Manipur from Myanmar. It further states that the Kuki militants are reportedly organized into units of 30 members each, currently scattered in the periphery and are expected to launch multiple coordinated attacks on Meite villages around September 28, 2024 and cautioned the police department to take all necessary measures. However, this situation is highly suspected to be a conspiracy as the Chief Minister Office has also sent three letters on January 15, 2024, January 27, 2024 and January 31, 2024 to the DZP and the Manipur Security Advisor alerting them about the movement of an alleged 200 armed Kukizo militants in areas bordering Jiribam. Later, after five months, the UNLF radical Meite are militants Arambai Tengol, Meite Lipun, in coordination with State Police Commando, attacked Kuki Zo villages in the Jiribam area, bordering Tamenglong districts. Similarly, the Secretary to the Chief Minister of Manipur's letter supposedly indicates that, sooner or later, there will be a massive offensive against Kuki Zo villages. As such, Kuki Zo village volunteers are urged to take extra precautionary measures measures against an imminent attack from the Joint Coordinated Forces of the UNLF, Arambai Tengol, Meite Lipun and Manipur Police Commandos. They may fool us once but not every time. Regarding the Chief Minister of Manipur and Biren Singh's claims about the involvement of foreign hands, especially from Myanmar, in the current ethnic conflict, specifically the apprehension of one elect member of the pro-democratic outfit Kuki National Army Burma KNAB, involved in arms trafficking on September 16 by the Assam Rifles. The KSO General Headquarters would like to inform the public that sources within the Assam Rifles told that told the Deccan Herald, published on September 17, that Mr. Thang Lian Kap was arrested near the Indo-Myanmar boulder in Chandil district after being found on the Indian side without any documentation. The sources in the Assam Rifles, however, refused to comment on the Chief Minister claim that Thang Lian Kap is a member of KNAB. 
Students from Leimakong under the leadership of Student Wing Leimakong Area Protection Committee held a protest today to show their disapproval against the removal of Assam rifles by the Home Ministry from the Kuki inhabited regions. The protesting students told the media that the peacekeeping forces, that is, the Assam rifles, had shown deep, in, deep devotion to their duties since the onset of the conflict on May last year. It is due to the Assam rifles' neutrality and dutifulness that so many Kuki villages are safe from the Meitei's barbaric hands. They had prevented the Meitei's from crossing the buffer zones and attacking the Kuki's. If the Assam rifles are removed from the buffer zones, then all the Kuki's will be wiped out from their lands, they said. The students also said that it is due to the Assam rifles' dutifulness that they can continue going to school peacefully despite the state unrest and hence they do not want the transferring of the Assam rifles since it is only the Assam rifles that can assure them of peace and neutrality. During the protest, the students chanted various slogans. They also said that Enbiran Singh is the perpetrator and the mastermind behind this genocidal pro pogrom upon the Kuki. The students also highlighted the Kuki community's demand for separate administration and urged the central government to grant this demand in the earliest. The Meitei's allegations of the Kuki people being narco-terrorists, poppy cultivators and illegal immigrants is just an excuse for them to waste wars against us, said the students. The students also said that separate administration is the only solution for this communal conflict in the state and that the central government needs to do the needful to prevent the loss of more Indian lives. Few of the notable placard reads, Assam Rifles Protector of the Buffer Jones. We say no to Assam Rifles Replacement. Assam Rifles is neutral force, etc. The student says that they are totally against the removal of 22nd Assam Rifles who are stationing in the buffer zones between Kangpopi and Infal and replacing them with CRPF. So as to return normalcy in Manipur, the Assam rifles should not be removed from their post but let them continue carrying out their duties of maintaining neutrality between the two communities. The replacement of Assam rifles with CRPF on the other hand can escalate the conflict and that the students urge the central government to review their ideas regarding these actions. It is due to the well-knowledge Assam rifles that firing and attacks had stopped in most conflict zones, the protesters stated. Kuki National Organization KNO has made a public announcement saying no individual or organization shall not be involved in extortion activities. As per information received from various places, non so groups such as UKNA and the likes are reported to be actively involved in extortion activities in the district. Since we are facing a conflict in the present moment, extortion is completely prohibited, says the KNO. The KNO also further says that they are willing to be under the same umbrella cookie army with the non soul group but the home ministry is against it and hence actions cannot be taken as planned hence the KNO urged the non soul group to surrender to the army in the earliest since there are rumors of armies operating in their areas the KNO requests the non soul groups to take actions wisely The Manipur Congress on September 18 ruled out any evidence on the ground of the government's talks with Kuki and Meitei groups aiming to resolve the ethnic conflict in the state. Union Home Minister Amit Shah on Tuesday said that the government was holding talks with both Meitei and Kuki communities to ensure lasting peace. He further added that the government has begun fencing the country's border with Myanmar to check infiltration, which was the root cause for the trouble. Responding to Sa's statement, Manipur Congress Working President K.H. Dev Brata Singh told reporters, Shah has claimed that the government is holding talks with both Meitei and Kuki groups to resolve the crisis in the state, but there is no evidence of such talks on the ground. There is a lack of transparency in his statement. The center needs to provide details of the groups involved in the dialogue as there are numerous groups in the Infal Valley. Talks with one group alone will not be sufficient. It is hard to believe that dialogue is happening as nothing can be seen on the ground level. We demand to know which group are involved in the talks, he said. On the recent statement of Chief Minister N. Brand Singh about the involvement of foreign hands in the conflict, the senior Congress leader said that such a claim, however, was not met in Sa's statement. 
The CM had recently said that the arrest of a militant of KNAB outfit sought the involvement of foreign hands in the conflict. However, there was no such claim in Sa's statement. We think the claim would have been more credible had the center said that foreign players were involved in the crisis, he said. The Congress le leader also demanded a clarification from the state government about a purported official document allegedly signed by Secretary to the CM and Geoffrey and addressed to the DGP stating that 900 trained cookie militants have moved on the hills adjoining in Fall Valley and we are planning to carry out coordinated attacks on Maytay villages around September 28. The official document circulating on social media has created panic in the Frings areas of Infall Valley and there have been reports of construction of bunkers to protect life and properties. We demand a clarification from the Chief Minister and the Secretary to the Chief Minister about it, he said. More than 200 people have been killed and hundreds rendered homeless in ethnic violence between Infall Valley Best Matics and adjoining Hills Best Cookies since May last year. On Tuesday, Sa said that, bearing three days of violence last week, the overall situation in Manipur has been calm and the government has been working to restore peace in the restive northeastern state. We are talking to the Koki and Meite groups. We have prepared a roadmap and will take all possible steps, he had said. Sa said that in the first 100 days of the Modi 3.0 government, work on fencing the Indian Myanmar border, which is the root cause of the problem, has begun. The Union Home Minister said that the government has already scrapped the Indian Myanmar Free Movement Regime FMR, which allowed people residing close to the border between the two countries to venture up to 16 km into its other's territory without any documents. The Manipur State Rural Livelihoods Mission MSRLM Department of Rural Development and Panchayati Ras Government of Manipur organized a cleanliness drive under the Swatsta He Siwa campaign 2024. Village level federations, leaders, community cadres, and staff from various blocks participated. The drive aimed to promote cleanliness and sanitation aligned with the Indian government's initiatives. Over 200 participants cleaned the BMMU Tuibung office premises. DL Robert Haukip, block in charge of block mission management unit, BMMU Tuibung, appreciated the efforts of all participants. The block has 191 local governance bodies, with 80 villages having self-help groups. Plans are underway to establish self-help groups in remaining villages. The block ensures assure support for village development and encourages village authorities to take ownership. A video showing a large crowd of protesters holding banners reading Manipur wants peace and rally for peace is circulating online with claims that it depicts the current situation in the northeastern Indian state of Manipur. A post on X shared the videos with the caption Breaking news, the situation in Manipur has significantly worsened with no coverage from Indian media. Frustration is mounting as thousands of people have taken to the streets demanding freedom from India. The post had garnered over 14,000 views, 191 receipts, and 515 likes at the time of writing this story. Archived versions of the post are available here and here. Others, users of X who hear the clip, express frustration that the Narendra Modi-led central government is ignoring the situation in Manipur. One user wrote, translated to English, Why is this voice of Manipur not reaching the ears of the Modi government, or does it not want to listen? Archived versions of this post can be found here, here and here. The footage has also gained tra traction on Facebook with similar narratives. An archived version of such a post can be found here. The claim emerged amid recent incidents of violence in Manipur, which has experienced tensions between the Kuki and Mayday communities since May 2023. An Indian Express report details that 11 people have been killed since September 11 in various incidents leading to widespread protests. A curfew has been imposed and the internet has been suspended in the valley districts of the state. However, this widely shared clip does not show recent protests. It was created using artificial intelligence. Using a reverse image search, logically facts discovered that the same video was shared on Instagram on February 1, 2024 by a user named Manap Jyoti Gogoi, archive here.
Gogoi identified as a digital creator and the caption clearly states that the images are AI generated. Further investigation revealed that Gogoi's Instagram account has previously featured similar AI generated images and videos related to the other issues in India including violence in Manipur. Logically, Fax has contacted Gogoi for a comment and will update this article upon receiving a response. Additionally, the clip was analyzed using the AI detection tool Hive Moderation which confirmed with 99.8% certainty that the video was AI generated. We also ran the video on ETSAR, an AI detector tool developed in collaboration with IIT Jodhpur and are awaiting the results. The India Meteorological Department IMD has forecast heavy rainfall in isolated parts of Chhattisgarh, Assam, Meghalaya, Nagaland, Manipur, Mizoram, and Tripura till 24 September. Heavy rainfall is also expected over Uttar Pradesh, Uttarakhand, and Madhya Pradesh during the next three days. IMD has also forecast hot and humid weather over Tamil Nadu, Puducherry, and Karaikal today. The weather agency said that widespread light to moderate rainfall is very likely over Konkan and Goa during the week. Meanwhile, Delhi and its adjoining areas are witnessing light to moderate rainfall since late night. The rainfall also affected traffic movement in the national capital this morning. The Joint Action Committee of the Landowners Association of Kolasib District has called for an indefinite blockade of the National Highway 306 6 Siltar Aizol from September 25, 2024 at 6 a.m. Landowners Association of Kolasib District stated that they have called for a blockade of the National Highway, alleging that the state government has refused to take final action in the ownership of land for the last three years. The association stated that the conflict between the government and their district land owners started when the forest department recently claimed the Virengte Sairang Road as the roadside reserve forest under the RRF notification 1965. They stated that the permanent land passes given to individuals by the Revenue Department were never a cause of concern by the Forest Department before and alleged that the department's claim of their properties as roadside reserve forests was instigated by their aim to receive the CS NPV compensation in the construction of the four land highway between Siltar and Aizol. The association highlighted that in 2021, the High Court had ruled the RRF notification 1965 as invalid, as many individuals have resided within the area, and alleged that in recent years, the Forest Department, with the help of an environmental NGO, has appealed that the case to the Supreme Court. They stated that the state government has supported RRF and requested a stay of the order. The association also accused the government of freezing their property since 2020 and requested that if the state government cannot resolve the conflict between the landowners and the forest department, they should cancel the construction of the four land highway and also demanded compensation from the government for freezing of their property for three years. Kolasib District Land Owners Association affirmed their full support of the construction of a four-lane highway, stating that it will greatly benefit the state. They stated that it is under unfortunate circumstances that they are compelled to block the highway to push for their rights and privileges. AAP's Atishi will take out as Delhi Chief Minister on Saturday, the party announced today. The ruling party had initially decided that only Atishi would be sworn in. However, it was later determined that her council of ministers would also take the oath. Atishi will take over from Arvind Kasrawal who resigned from the post on Tuesday. AAP say Kasrawal will also give up security and move out of the chief minister's residence in 15 days to live like a commoner. Atishi represents the Kalkazi constituency in the Delhi Assembly and holds the highest number of portfolios in the Delhi government. She was appointed to the Delhi cabinet in March 2023 in the face of difficulties faced by AAP following arrests of Manish Sisodia in the excise policy case.
He has also been released on bail in the case. ATC will have her task cut, cut out as she will be key face of AAP as it prepares for assembly polls with aim to come to power again in the national capital. AAP has demanded early polls to the Delhi Assembly. The assembly polls will were held in early 2020. Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar ordered the additional Director General of Police, ADZ, Law and Order to visit Nawada to inspect Nawada where around 21 homes of Dalits were set on fire on Wednesday over an LX land dispute. Such were also fire in the air as miscreants went on to torch homes one after the other. The incident happened in Manji Tola in Mufasil police station area and no injuries have been reported so far. Police say the case has been registered and investigation is underway. 15 people have been detained so far and search operations have been launched to nab other accused persons. A call was received around 7.30 p.m. that some houses were set on fire in Manji Tola. Police immediately reached the spot along with fire engines. It took some time to doze the blaze. According to villagers, a group of people started setting the house on fire around 7 p.m. Superintendent of Police Abhinav Diman said after visiting the area. The official claimed that the situation is under control and a large contingent of police has been deployed to prevent any potential flare-up over the incident. We are providing relief materials, including food packets and drinking water, to those displaced. Temporary tents have been set up for the victims, said Nawada District Magistrate Ashutosh Kumar Verma. He also refuted claims that cattle were charged, saying no evidence has been found to support that. Congress President Malik Arjun Kharge condemned the crime against Dalits and elites that the BJP and its NDA allies remain indifferent to such crimes. The terror of the bullies of the Mahadali colony in Nawada, Bihar is another proof of the jungle ras of the NDA double engine government. It is extremely condemnable that around 100 Dalit houses were set on fire, firing was done and everything of the poor families was snatched away in the darkness of the night. The BZP and its allies utter indifference towards the Dalits and the deprived, criminal neglect and promotion of anti-social elements is now at its peak. Prime Minister Modi is silent as usual. Nitish is carefree in his grid for power and the NDA allies are speechless, Kharge wrote in a post on X. BSP Chief Mayawati said the incident is extremely sad and serious and called for rehabilitation of victims. The incident of burning down many houses of poor Dalits in Bihars, Nawada by the goons and ruining their lives is extremely sad and serious. The government should take strict legal action against the culprits and also provide full financial help for the rehabilitation of the victims she posted on X. The Union Cabinet on Wednesday approved the Pradhan Mantri Janjatiya Unnat Gram Abhiyan with a total outlay of Rs 79,156 crore aimed at improving the socio-economic conditions of tribal communities. This initiative will focus on saturating tribal majority villages and aspirational districts covering approximately 63,000 villages and benefiting more than 5 crore tribal people across 30 states and union territories. Key interventions of the program include housing, health, education and livelihood opportunities for tribal households with implementation through 17 line ministries over the next five years. The mission focuses on four major goals, developing infrastructure, promoting economic empowerment, universalizing access to education, and improving health outcomes. Under this scheme, tribal households will gain access to PAKA housing, water, electricity, skill development programs, and healthcare facilities, among other benefits. Additionally, it envisions promoting tribal tourism with the construction of homestays and boosting income through initiatives for forest right holders and agricultural activities. The central government will also invest in improving tribal residential schools, setting up centers for the di diagnosis of sickle cell disease and establishing 100 tribal multi-purpose marketing centers to enhance the marketing of tribal products.
Building on the success of the Pradhan Mantri Janjati Adivasi Nayai Mahaabiyan, the mission represents a coordinated effort to ensure sustainable and holistic development for tribal areas across India. Fourteen people have died and more than 300 others wounded as walkie-talkie have blown up a Hezbollah strongholds across Lebanon. This comes a day after pagers exploded across the Middle Eastern country, killing 12 people and injuring nearly 3,000 others. There are reports that landline telephone exploded too at various locations in East Lebanon. According to reports, the handheld wireless radio devices or walkie-talkie were bought around five months ago, approximately the same time as the pagers. Today's blast happened across southern Lebanon as well as Beirut suburbs. At least one of the blasts happened near a funeral organized by Hezbollah for a member who was killed in yesterday's Pedro blast. A video of the incident was widely circulated on social media platforms. Iran-backed Hezbollah said today that it attacked Israeli artillery positions with rockets in the first strike at its arc's rival since Pedro blast wounded thousands of its members in Lebanon and raised the prospect of a wider Middle East war. Israel has on Wednesday warned that Hezbollah escalation in the last 24 hours has moved the conflict's center of gravity to the north, adding that they are allocating forces, resources, and energy for the northern arena. The United States has warned against any escalation by either side. Israeli spy agency Mossad, which has a long history of sophisticated operations on foreign soil, planted explosives inside pagers imported by Hezbollah months before Tuesday's detonations. A senior Lebanese security sources and another source told news agency Reuters. This morning, Lebanese Health Minister Firas Abate confirmed that 12 people were killed and around 2,800 wounded in the incident. The minister in a televised press conference said the blast killed 12 people, including a girl, adding that about 2,800 people were injured and more than 200 of them critically. The injuries were mostly on the face, hands and stomach, he had said. Iran's state media had reported that its ambassador to Lebanon, Mostaba Amani, was also wounded in yesterday's Pazar incident. Ten bodies found, believed to be those sought, by, sought dead by the junta regime forces during the hostess arrest of those who got stuck in Lucky Man Hotel at San Tong Village in Pakkon Tong in Kachin state of Myanmar. Local media reported that at least 20 bodies were discovered very recently in San Tong Village, believed to have been brutally killed by the junta regime forces during the hostess arrest of individuals who were trapped inside the Lucky Man Hotel at San Tong Village in Pakon Tong. Pakon, in particular, has become the epicenter of intense fighting between the junta regime forces and the Katin Independence Army KIA. The junta regime forces have consistently carried out airstrikes in the area, resulting in civilian casualties. The hostess situation at the Lucky Man Hotel in San Tuang Village further underscores the brutality of the junta regime forces. Reports indicate that individuals trapped inside at the Lucky Man Hotel were victims of a raid by the junta regime forces. The brutality displayed in the reported deaths raises serious concerns about the safety and security of civilians in Kachin state. KNG also confirms that all the people trapped inside the Lucky Man Hotel have been rescued by KIA, while others claim that the death toll from the junta regime forces' actions continues to rise. Amid the ongoing Russia-Ukraine war, Moscow was said to be fully ready for detonating a nuclear bomb at any moment in the Arctic as per a report published in the Daily Mail. Soviet test site's director, Rear Admiral Andrei Sinisian, said that the testing facilities are prepared and can be used immediately if the order is given. The test site is ready to resume full-scale testing act activities. The laboratory and testing facilities are ready, the personnel are ready, say Rear Admiral Sinitsin, while speaking to the state on Rossi's Kaya Gajeta. 
He added that foreign intelligence has been monitoring the site, which is likely a sign of concern over nuclear tests. We are constantly ready to repel all types of threats, including the penetration of sabotage and re reconnaissance groups onto the island, he stated. Sinitsin said that the central test site of the Russian Federation would be used for conducting and providing non-nuclear explosive experiments. He added that the tests were in the interest of state security. Speaking about the preparedness of the site, Sinitsin said, the testing ground is ready to resume full-scale testing activities, ready in full. He said that the test can go ahead if Russian President Vladimir Putin gives an order. Since October 1990, the site has not been used for nuclear testing. Sinitsin said that the priority is to deter aggressors by readiness of testing ground infrastructure. He added that this includes maintaining a laboratory and experimental base in a prepared state. The testing ground has the appropriate staff, weapons, equipment that is everything that is necessary for activities, Sinitsin said. Days back, MP Andrei Kolensnik had appealed to Putin to authorize a nuclear bomb test as a warning signal to the Western countries. We need to carry out a nuclear explosion somewhere at some testing ground, Andrei Kolensnik, who is the former ruling United Russian Party. Nuclear tests are currently prohibited in our country, but maybe people should see what all this actually leads to. They should hear. If we leave the moratorium, maybe humanity will think twice, he added. Iranian President Masoud Pejaskan said, The blast caused by explosive flash paging devices belonging to Lebanon's Hezbollah is a sign of collapse of humanity. He also said that Western bakers of Israel should feel same after paging devices exploded in a deadly attack that Tehran aligned group blame on Israel. Western countries and the Americans fully support the crimes, killing and indiscriminate assassinations of the Zionist regime, Pejaskan said in a statement referring to Israel, adding that the explosions should bring them same. The nation earlier caused Israel of mass murder after hundreds of peasant devices owned by the Tehran-aligned Hezbollah group in Lebanon exploded, killing 11 people and wounding nearly 4,000 others. In a statement released on Wednesday, Israel's foreign ministry spokesperson Nasir Kanani condemned the terrorist act of the Zionist regime as an example of mass murder. This response came hours after Hezbollah promised to punish Israel for a deadly attack in which hundreds of peasant devices used by the militant group's members exploded almost simultaneously across Lebanon. There was no immediate comment from Israel on the wave of explosion that also killed the 10-year-old daughter of a Hezbollah member. Kanani, while expressing sympathy and solidarity with the government and people of the allied country, emphasized that Iran is ready to provide any necessary assistance to Lebanon. The attack came just hours after Israel announced it was broadening the aims of the war in Gaza sparked by Hamas' October 7 attacks. The Netanyahu government has said that Israel will include its fight against the Palestinian group ally Hezbollah along the country's border with Lebanon. We hold the Israeli enemy fully responsible for this criminal aggression, the group said in a statement on Tuesday, adding that Israel will certainly receive its just punishment for, its, for this sinful aggression. On Wednesday, the group voted in another statement on Telegram it would continue its fight in support of Gaza while reiterating it would advance Tuesday's blast. The latest report on Myanmar by the UN Human Rights Office, OHCHR, published on Tuesday has painted a dismal state of human rights situation in the country. The UN report has accused the Myanmar military, the junta, of serious violations of human rights that underscore the deepening crisis and lack of rule of law throughout the country. It said at least 5,350 civilians have been killed in military actions, including over 1,800 custodial deaths. Hundreds of these deaths were reported from air and artillery strikes by the junta. The report also revealed that 2,414 people died during 15 months between April 2023 and June 2024. An increase of 50% compared with the previous reporting period. The military had ousted 
the elected civilian government of Nobel laureate Aung San Suu Kyi in February 2021, triggering nationwide street protests that lead to armed rebellion in many parts of the country. The junta crossed street protests with a heavy hand, often violently. Since the coup on 1 1st February 2021, at least 5,350 civilians have been killed, more than 3.3 million displaced, and over half the population are living below the poverty line, primarily due to military violence, according to the report, Liz Trossel, the OHCHR spokesperson, said. The report looks at the devastating impact of the violence, destruction and deprivation on people's mental health, as well as the regression in economic and social rights, which is precipitating further economic decline. At the same time, young people who provide the key to Myanmar's future are fleeing abroad to escape being forced to serve in or fight for the military, Trossel said. The report also documents talking details about detentions by the military. Nearly 27,400 individuals have been arrested since the coup, with arrests on the rise since the military's implementation of mandatory conscription in February 2024. Credible sources say that at least 1,853 have died in custody, including 88 children and 125 women. Based on the UN body's findings, UN High Commissioner Volker Truk has called on the UN Security Council to refer the full scope of the current situation in Myanmar to the International Criminal Court. Turk also called for an end to the violence and for the immediate and unconditional release of all those arbitrarily detained. James Rodehaver, head of UN Human Rights Myanmar team, said there is a real deterioration due to violence and armed conflict in the country. The other side of that coin, however, is that there are massive regressions in human rights that have been provoked by a vacuum of rule of law. It is something that the report tries to highlight in great detail. It is how the Myanmar military has created a crisis by instrumentalizing the legal system, criminalizing nearly all forms of dissent against its attempt to rule the country, Rode Haver said. But then, of course, you have what happens to those people once they are arrested. It is lengthy periods of pre-trial detention in detention facilities that have horrific conditions. And then, of course, you have the pervasive use of torture and ill-treatment. Detainees interviewed by our office, office described methods such as being suspended from the ceiling without food or water, being forced to kneel or crawl on hard or soft objects, Rode Haver stated. The introduction of animals such as snakes or insects or other, while animals in order to provoke fear and terror individuals. Beating people with iron poles, bamboo sticks, batons, rifle butts, leather stripes, electric wires, motorcycle chains, asphyxiation, mock executions, electrocution and burning with deserts, lighters, cigarettes and boiling water. Truly, some of the most depraved behavior utilized as methods of torture in these detention centers, he said. The UN report also said that the junta has arrested nearly 27,400 people since the coup. These detainees are said to have been camped at different military training centers. Myanmar is being investigated by the International Court of Justice for Genocide over its 2017 crackdown on the minority Rohingya Muslims. That is all for today's news and have a pleasant evening ahead.